Dr. Joe here. Today we're going to take a look at this game, Albuera 1811, Beresford vs. Salt, a game designed by Adam Niekwicz and published by Strategimata, a Polish publisher. And this is a game about the bloodiest battle of the Napoleonic Wars in Spain. It pitted an Anglo-allied army composed of British, Spanish, and Portuguese units commanded by General William Beresford against a French army commanded by Marshal Soult. Each turn in this game represents 15 minutes of real time, each hex 150 meters, and each infantry unit is a battalion, cavalry units are squadrons, there are individual leaders for brigades and divisions, and of course the commander-in-chief for each of the sides. There's also artillery units that represent two to eight artillery pieces. The game uses a chit pull activation system, so you don't know who is going to go each turn. That enhances replayability. Special rules indicate which particular activation markers start in the activation pool at the beginning of the game and which ones are added during each turn. Units are activated either by brigade or by division and these are color-coded. For example, here you see General Campbell. He's a brigade commander. He commands Portuguese units. He has associated a bright yellow uh, color and you see units that have that bright yellow color in the bottom circle. Those are General Campbell's units. Division commanders like uh, General Hamilton show two colored symbols, round symbols, meaning that those are the two brigades that they command and they have also an ability to coordinate and activate both of their brigades at the same time if they pass a die roll, which is equal or lower than the value that you see there on the top right hand corner. That's the coordination value. And here we see General Da Fonseca, who is one of the brigade commanders uh, subordinated to General Hamilton. The other one is Campbell that we saw before. Here we see the terrain effects table and it contains a lot of information about the game. You see that the cost of the terrain for movement purposes depends on the particular formation that the infantry is currently in. Line formation is denoted by the firing soldier. Notice, for example, that in clear terrain, each hex costs one and a half movement points to enter, if in line formation. But if that unit is in column formation, it only costs one movement point, as well as if the unit is skirmishers. Also, units can be in square formation, denoted by that uh, marker that would be placed on top of the unit. We see also the different terrain types in the game. There's forest hexes as well as olive groves, villages, and rivers. Roads. And here we see the costs for changing facing. In this game, units face uh, hex vertices and it costs one movement point to change uh, facing by 60 degrees. And then here's the cost to change into the formations that are listed on the chart. Here we see a British line unit. Some of the units, which are large in terms of manpower, cover two hexes and are rectangular shaped like this one. The top number in the red circle is the morale rating. And uh, units conduct morale checks constantly throughout the game for many purposes. To pass a morale check, the unit has to roll equal or less its morale rating with a 10-sided die, uh, with the caveat that in this game, a zero on the die is a zero. So this particular unit has an 80% chance of passing a morale check if there are no die roll modifiers. The bottom number in the circle is the manpower of the unit and the color in that circle varies 
to denote to which brigade it belongs. So there's color coding used in that second bottom circle to distinguish uh, to which brigade each unit belongs. So this unit has a manpower of eight. And finally, at the bottom, you see a percentage. That is per the percentage of manpower points that can project their firepower. And in the, the case of these units that you see here, these British units, they can project 100% of their manpower points. Spanish units, as well as French units, only project 66% of their firepower outside of the hex, as denoted there. The pink color brigade is that of General Da Fonseca, and you see Da Fonseca's units. And units, in order to be in command, they have to be within three hexes of their commanding officer. So you see that Da Fonseca is going to be within three hexes of his units, including Brown's artillery. Let's take a look at the sequence of play. The first phase is the creation of the activation pool. Here, scenario rules tell us which activation markers start in the pool and which are added during every turn. Then we go to phase two, and a chit is drawn from the activation pool. The activated commander is flipped to its back or activated side. Units subordinated to the activated commander are now moved, and fire combat, cavalry charges, and counterattacks that they cause are now resolved. Next, clash combat is resolved. Now the activation pool is checked, and if activation chits are left, we start phase two once again. If it is empty, the game continues with the next phase, which is the administration phase. Here, fire markers are removed, and activated commander counters are flipped to their front sides. We check for automatic victory, and if the game doesn't end, we start another turn. In this game, infantry in line is represented by two types of counters, a 15 by 15 millimeter square counter and a 30 by 15 millimeter rectangle sized counter. The square counter is used when the manpower rating of British or Portuguese infantry is less than six, and as to the French when manpower is less than eight. In any other case, we use a rectangle counter. Battalions may detach a skirmisher company, and this reduces the battalion's strength by one. During its movement subphase, a battalion may form a square in clear terrain if it has at least a manpower rating of three. If so, the unit pays four movement points to change formation. A square can also be created when the hex occupied by an infantry unit is entered by enemy cavalry. However, in this situation, the infantry must pass a morale check. If it so passes, it forms a square, but if it fails, it suffers one loss and its formation remains unchanged. In this game, cavalry units can conduct cavalry charges during the movement subphase. For this, they have to move at least three hexes, not change their facing, not cross any river hex sides, or enter any non-clear hexes. The charge gives the cavalry favorable column modifiers on the clash table, and if the cavalry wins the charge, it may move further if it still has movement points left, and if so, it may perform another charge. Movement allowances in this game are based on unit types. Infantry has four movement points, cavalry eight, commanders nine, and as to artillery, it depends on which formation they are in, either foot, limbered foot, or horse artillery, as shown on the chart. A unit can change its facing 60 degrees by paying one movement point. The exception are units in skirmish order. Changing facing for them does not cost any movement points. Units may also perform double march, and they must move by spending six 
movement points with certain limitations as they cannot engage in musket fire, change facing, or detach skirmishers. In this game, each artillery unit has a field of fire as shown here. The range and effect of fire are shown on the counter. For example, here, the notation 3-4-1M means that at a range of 3 and 4 hexes, the effect of fire of this artillery unit is to cause a morale check on the target unit with a plus 1 modifier. There are various situations in the game when a friendly unit reacts to an enemy unit entering one of its frontal hexes and is called to perform a counterattack. Counterattacking is another form of close combat that occurs when two opposing units are in the same hex. During the enemy movement subphase, friendly units may react when enemy units move into their frontal hexes. In cases when an enemy infantry unit enters a friendly infantry unit's frontal hex, a die is rolled. On a one or less, the friendly unit may conduct musket fire and then counterattack, or the unit may change facing and conduct musket fire. If an enemy infantry unit enters the frontal hex of a friendly skirmisher unit, the friendly unit may conduct musket fire and retreat one hex. And there are other situations not mentioned here where enemy units enter frontal hexes of friendly units and various possible results may occur, including counterattack. Musket fire has a maximum range of two hexes, and we calculate the firepower by multiplying the manpower rating by the firepower percentage. If firing at a target two hexes away, we divide the result by two. Musket fire may be performed only if there's a line of sight and the unit is within range. Infantry can fire up to four times per turn. First time an infantry unit fires in a turn, there is a plus one modifier applied to the target enemy unit's morale check. The third and fourth times it fires, however, the target unit benefits from a minus one die roll modifier to its morale check. The fire table results are from no effect to a morale check to a morale check with a plus one or plus two die roll modifier. Friendly units in flank hexes of other friendly units may fire together. And there is a plus one row shift downwards on the fire table for every firing hex beyond one that fires at an enemy unit. Clash is the term in the game for combat between two enemy units in the same hex. All clashes are resolved during the clash subphase. The basic column is zero, and we apply positive and negative column shifts that may apply. And those are listed above the clash table. The clash table indicates which side lost the clash, and the loser of the clash suffers two losses, and its units are routed, which means that they are removed from the map, and they entered the game one, two, or three turns as indicated in the result. The winner takes one loss and remains in the hex. So, this is Albuera 1811, Beresford versus Salt, a game designed by Adam Niekwisch and published by Strategemata. And I hope that this video has given you an idea of the flow of the game and what the game has to offer. This is Stuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.